If a stone is thrown into a water, it sinks right away. But how does a huge ship floats? How are tattoos applied permanently on the skin? In courts, after a death penalty judgment, why does the judge breaks the nib of the pen? Why do SIM cards have a cut at one end of the corner? How does a human survive on planet Mars? Let's find out answers to these interesting questions in this video. Even small stones sink in water, but huge ships don't. Let's find out the reason. Have you ever tried to immerse a balloon or a ball in the water? Have you felt an upward force opposing the weight of the immersed object? This force is called buoyancy force. If you see any object floating in the water, this buoyancy force is the reason. Let's understand how this force works. If we immerse any object in the water, some volume of the water equal to the volume of the immersed object gets displaced. A buoyancy force equals to the weight of the water that got displaced works upwards on the immersed object. The other thing to consider is density. Any object which has density lower than the water's density floats. For example, plastic, a piece of wood or any oil spilled has lower density than water. But heavy metals like iron has density more than the water. Then are you wondering how does a ship built with metal floats? Well, if you look at the design of a ship, even though it looks huge, it is hollow inside. The air that's trapped inside a ship is much less dense than the water. As a ship is set in water, it pushes down and displaces an amount of water equal to its own weight. That's how it stays float. How does tattoos work? We have three layers in our skin. The top layer is called epidermis. Every day millions of dead skin cells deplete from this layer and new cells form. The layer beneath is called dermis. This layer consists of nerves that feel pain, blood vessels and glands. The bottom layer is called subcutaneous layer made of fat. A tattoo machine consists of motor and multiple needles grouped together holding the ink. These needles puncture the skin 50 to 3000 times per minute, injecting down the ink into dermis layer. The body detects the wound, activates immune system and sends white blood cells to heal. Usually, the macrophage cells present in white blood cells captures the foreign particles in the body and carries away from the injured spot for healing. When macrophage cells capture the ink injected and try to clean the affected area due to the ink particles being big, the ink captured macrophage cells unable to move and get stuck permanently in gel matrix showing like a tattoo on the skin. This is how permanent tattoos work. However, even these permanent tattoos can be removed using laser technology. When the laser is projected on tattoo, it breaks the ink particles into tiny, helping my macrophage cells to carry away erasing the tattoo. In courts, after a death penalty, judgment, why does the judge breaks the nib of the pen? This has been an old practice. There are many reasons behind it. The practice is symbolic of a belief that a pen that is used to take away a person's life should not be used ever again for other purposes. Another theory that backs the breaking of nip is once written or signed, the judge have no power to review or revoke the judgment. Why do SIM cards have a cut at one end of the corner? The SIM card has a gold colored part which is divided into small pins. These pins must align with specific pins of the phone hardware to avoid the misalignment of the SIM card and mobile phone card holder pins, the SIM has to be inserted in only one specific direction. So SIM cards have the cut on one corner so that anybody can easily identify which side of the SIM card is to be inserted in the phone without any instructions. This shape has been standardized by ISO and IEC. So all cell phone manufacturers and networks in the world has to follow this standard. We have seen different sizes of SIM cards like regular, micro and nano, but the shape is maintained the same. Similarly, even memory cards has a specific shape for the same reason. We have been hearing about the life expansion onto planet Mars. Can we actually survive on Mars? How is the life is going to be? Let's find out. Earth and Mars rotates around the Sun in their orbits with different speeds. 
so the distance between these two planets is never seen. The trip to Mars will take about 7 months covering about 300 million miles. The environment on Mars is completely different than Earth. As we are all aware, oxygen is needed for human survival, but the air on Mars consists of 96% of carbon dioxide. So it is not possible to go out without any space suit. NASA has been developing NASA MOXIE system technology that converts carbon dioxide present on Mars into oxygen. Compared to Earth, Mars atmosphere is thinner, allowing direct cosmic radiation from the Sun. To avoid exposure for these rays, the cities needs to be built underground. If they are built above the surface, then a protective bubble needs to be built. In this bubble, the Earth's atmosphere will be replicated so we can live normally inside it. Water exists on Mars but in the form of ice at the North Pole. The soil is not suitable for forming, so hydroponics needs to be adopted. Hydroponics is nothing but a simply growing of plants without soil by feeding a solution containing a perfected mix of micronutrients. Coming to the electricity, we need to rely on solar power. But since Mars is farther from Sun compared to the Earth, only 40% of solar power what we produce on Earth is captured at Mars. The dust storms which are very frequent on Mars may destroy these solar panels. So the other kind of energy generators are also being considered like geothermal and nuclear energy. Mars has 1 by 3rd gravitational force compared to Earth. So a human being weighing 45 kg on Earth will weigh only 17 kg on Mars. A day on Earth is 24 hours, but on Mars it's 24 hours 37 minutes. One year on Earth is 365 days, but on Mars it's 687 days. Like we have one moon for the Earth, we do have two for Mars. They are called Phobos and Deimos. Right now, NASA and SpaceX are already planning to send humans onto Mars. Elon Musk's SpaceX is targeting to send a human onto Mars by 2024 and planning to establish a self-sustaining city by 2050. Some people have raised questions like why do we need to explore other planets instead of working on our Earth a better place to live? Well, Elon Musk's answer to this is, like an asteroid destroyed dinosaurs on the Earth, what if similar incidents are repeated? We need another planet to continue human existence. So let's wait and see what future holds for us. Okay friends, if you have learned something new today, please like and share it with your dear ones. And please subscribe to my channel, Ask Me Why, to get more updates on upcoming interesting videos. Thank you.